Hello, mortals. I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. Now, I've already done my top 10 books of 2020, which you can see up here. So, of course, I have to also do the bottoms because everyone loves bottoms. And I don't necessarily even mean that these are bad books. Like I said in my previous video, I read 50 books this year, and I wouldn't say there are 10 terrible books in that lot, but certainly I can pick out 10 disappointing books that I've read this year. Maybe my expectations were too high. Maybe they were really bad books. I picked 10 out, so let's get to it. But before then, please subscribe to this channel because I really want to get this channel to grow in 2021. 2020 was an okay year on BookTube for me, even though it was a terrible year for everyone else. But 2021, I really want to try to kick it up a notch. And give this video a thumbs up because that really does help with this mysterious algorithm thing that lurks about YouTube. Now those who have been watching me know I don't like giving bad reviews to books, but there has to be losers as well as winners. And again, these are disappointing books. They aren't necessarily one-star books. They could be two or three-star books that maybe I had high expectations on. Number 10 is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. I was really intrigued by this book because it was presented as a Western science fiction story, and it's set in a post-apocalyptic future in the American West, which has devolved into sort of a Mad Max meets Billy the Kid setting. <laughs> and women here do not generally hold any positions of power, except for those who are librarians are women who travel in covered wagons delivering books from town to town. And the world is fascinating and the characters are interesting. Uh, the main character is a woman who runs away from an arranged marriage and hooks up with a group of librarians. Yeah! And she meets lesbians for the first time and also a non-binary person who has to dress as a woman for survival when in towns and cities. But I didn't find there was a real plot, or a very thin plot. I thought it was a very bare-bones type of story where the group of women travel from town to town trying to decide what to do with the stowaway. I think it should have either been a short story or filled out much more in the plot department to make it novel length. I will say that the writing itself was really well done, but it wasn't enough for me. I'm sorry. Number nine is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron, a young adult fantasy. And this is not a Cinderella zombie story, darn it. But it is a story with an interesting concept. The setting takes place in a kingdom a few generations after Cinderella and Prince Charming founded the kingdom. So the society has evolved around the Cinderella and Prince Charming story, including an annual ball where young women dress up and are paired with men to be married. Now this is a problem for the main character, Sophia, who is a lesbian and likes to rebel against these traditions. Now, I don't think this is a terrible book, but I was just really meh about it. The pacing felt a little slow for me and it also felt like it was really proselytizing about women fighting against traditional roles. In other words, it was a little bit heavy-handed and frankly, it seemed a little dated to have that lesson. Would have been more impactful if this was published maybe in the 70s or 80s. Anyway, not a terrible book, but not one that I would recommend. Number eight is Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera, which is the first book of some series he's doing, which is a YA gay superhero fantasy. Now, this is the second gay superhero fantasy I read, the first one being The Extraordinaries, which is on my top 10 list. Alas, I found Infinity Sun to be disappointing. Full disclosure, I listened to Infinity Sun 
as an audiobook, and the audiobook narrators were not great, in my opinion, and that may have colored what I thought about the book. Now, the story is told from the point of view of twins, so there is a different narrator in the audiobook for each boy, and their voices weren't that different to me, but they weren't consistent with each other. Like, the characters were Hispanic, and one narrator had the mother speak with a thick accent, and the other narrator had the mother speak with no accent, which is not the fault of the voice actors, but the director at least should have caught on and uh, gave some direction. Anyway, there's also a couple other POV chapters done by different narrators, each different POV chapter and different character, but mostly it was back and forth between the uh, twins. Anyway, put aside my issues with the audiobook. The story itself is about two opposing superhero groups. One are the Celestials, who get their powers naturally, and one called the Spectres, who get their powers from draining the essence from magical creatures. There's a big conflict between these two, which cause a lot of destruction, and the twins, Emile and Brighton, are caught in the middle. Emile is more of the intellectual, who just wants these superheroes to go away, and Brighton is the one who wants to be a superhero, and he actually has a YouTube channel where he tries to capture videos of superheroes, and I actually like how social media was a part of the storyline. And my main issue was I didn't like the main characters that much, and they didn't seem to have much agency. In other words, events of the novels seemed to push them around, and I found the plot somewhat predictable. And yes, I said it was a gay superhero story, and there is sort of this gay subplot with Emile. Is it Emile? But <laughs> it's really just a bump in the road. Anyway, the whole book was a bit of a disappointment to me. Number seven is Blood Air by Emily Wen Zhao, a young adult fantasy. And I read this novel for the cancel a thon, read a thon, where you read books that were canceled for whatever reason. Now, Emily Wen Zhao's first novel was unjustly canceled, in my opinion. She was canceled because of her depiction of slaves, among other things. But anyway, that's all water under the bridge. I went into this novel really wanting to like this novel just to spite those who tried to cancel this author. But in the end, since my expectations were so high, I found the book was mediocre at best. It's set in a mostly traditional fantasy setting, but there is a definite Eastern European feel to it. It is about a young princess named Anna who has the power of a blood mage or a blood affinite. And magic users in this world each have some sort of affinity, like the flesh affinity can cut flesh, and the blood affinite can move blood. Magic users are persecuted, so Anna was thrown out of the castle and lives being hunted, trying to find out who murdered her father. And she eventually hooks up with a dashing criminal named Ramson. Now, I had some issues with the magic system, but what really got me was that I just didn't like the main character, Anna. I found her to be really hard to like. She continuously swung from being paranoid and passive to being foolhardy and aggressive. She runs headfirst into really dangerous situations, or she escalates situations, and she does so in a way that really makes you question her intelligence. I don't know. I just didn't like her, and this is a type of story where you're meant to like the main character. So, eh. Number six is The Hollow Ones by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan, which is a horror novel. And Guillermo del Toro, as you may know, is a film director. So I wasn't sure what to expect with this novel. It's basically a modern supernatural detective story about an FBI agent, a woman named Odessa Hardwick, who was caught in a case where a supernatural entity appears to be able to possess people and drive them insane. And it starts with her partner trying to kill her, and she ends up contacting a mysterious man who is actually an ancient sorcerer, 
who has been tracking down these supernatural entities for centuries. And I found the book predictable and boring. The characters for me weren't that interesting, at least not after they were first introduced. And I didn't find any surprises in this book. I certainly didn't find it particularly horrifying. So it was a big no for me. Number five is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero, which is an adult horror. I should have loved this novel. It is a contemporary Lovecraftian horror set up in an alternate Scooby-Doo universe. You heard me right, Scooby-Doo. And I would have made millions if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. So the story takes place years after this group of kid detectives have grown up and they are now jaded, down and out, rough people who are either mentally unstable, criminals, addicts, or dead. <laughs> now the last mystery they solved is kids have come back to haunt them, literally, so they gradually come back together as a group after having been scattered across different states in America, and once again they must return to Sleepy Lake where something happened, but they're just not sure. Now the characters for me just weren't that likable, and the writing was uneven. I'll be generous and say it was uneven. It did weird things like inexplicably the dialogue sometimes changed into script format, like you're reading a play. I don't know why. The plot was, I thought was predictable and the pacing was really slow. So it's one of those cases where all the ingredients were there, but the end product just was undercooked. Now number four, I have two books here, Twilight and Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. And I've gone into depth of why I was a fan of these novels. I know people love them. They just weren't for me. And granted, I made the bad decision to read both books simultaneously, which didn't help my dislike of the story. But basically, for me, it felt like there were too many long stretches where nothing was happening. And I've gone into detail about this already and have admitted that I may not just register romance plot points as actual plot points that move the story forward, but in general, these books just weren't for me. Now, number three, I don't think I talked about much, but it is The Peripheral, which is the first book in a series by William Gibson, the famous adult cyberpunk author. Now, I picked up this book Actually, I picked up the second book, The Agency, for Shelve It or Shove It, so I went back to read the first book. And I've read Gibson before, and I think he's one of the great science fiction writers. And I went into this knowing nothing about this book and the concept. The concept itself was fascinating. It takes place in the near future where Earths have different quantum realities, and somehow you can reach these alternate realities through technologies that work like virtual reality. Now, I ended up DNFing this book because I could not bring myself to care about the characters. I found them dark, depressing, completely unlikable. So even though the story or the concept was intriguing, I just couldn't overcome my complete ambivalence towards the characters. It just came to the point where I was reading this and I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. So, not for me. Number two is Bubblegum, a novel by Adam Levin, which is, well, it was marketed as an adult science fiction, but it, in my opinion, is science fiction in name only. It is about a man who is a writer named Belt Magnet. That's his name, Belt Magnet, who had uh, one successfully critically acclaimed novel, but has many psychological issues that kept him from writing another successful novel. And the main character had a suspiciously familiar biography to the writer, Levin. But you can draw your own conclusions about that. I would say it is a literary novel that is very slow paced. There is a science fiction element it comes from these little bioformed creatures called curios, 
that people collect and they grow, like um, Hamaguchis, or whatever they call those little things that sort of evolve and you have to like take care of it. Anyway, these are actual little creatures that people can collect. But anyway, they become so cute that you eventually have to kill them. So if you have one for a long length of time, you're sort of a celebrity because it's really unusual for you not to kill this little creature because it's so cute. So <laughs> anyway, my main problem was the writing. It was so dense and, in my opinion, self-indulgent and circuitous that I ended up having to DNF this novel. Now, I know some people really enjoy this type of novel, but I'm not one of them. You know, if you really like David Foster Wallace, maybe you'll like this novel. I don't know. Wasn't for me. And number one, my most disappointing book is Martin McLean, Middle School Queen by Alyssa Zakzek, a middle grade gay contemporary. Now, I was so totally on board for this middle grade novel about a young drag queen. I can't tell you how much I actively disliked this novel. It is about a middle school kid who doesn't know if he's gay, but hates the idea that he might be, who may or may not be feminine, but for some reason decides he wants to be a drag queen. There was just so much wrong with this book. I, I couldn't take it. It was unrealistic is too mild a word for this weirdly politically correct universe this author has created. Ultimately, I could not even finish the novel and don't recommend it to anybody. If you want a book about an effeminate queer boy, check out Freak Show by James St. James. So those are my bottom 10 books for 2020. Let me know in the comments what your most disappointing books were for 2020. And until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed. <laughs>